Have you ever wondered what insects could be living inside a human being? A spine-chilling thought, isn't it? But believe it or not, it's more common than you might think. In the vast and complex ecosystem that is the human body, there are a variety of insects that have adapted to call it home. From the surface of our skin to the depths of our intestines, these unexpected tenants have found ways to thrive. Intrigued? Let's dive into the world of these unexpected tenants. Starting with number six, we have the eyelash mite. Imagine, if you will, a microscopic creature, barely visible to the naked eye, residing in a place as close to you as your own face. This is the eyelash mite, its preferred habitat, right at the base of your eyelashes. Yes, you heard it right. These minuscule critters make their homes in the follicles of our eyelashes, where they feed on sebum, the oily substance secreted by our skin. These mites are incredibly small, typically measuring less than half a millimeter in length. Despite their size, they play a significant role in our lives. In small numbers, they're usually harmless, but a surge in their population can lead to a condition called demodex folliculitis, characterized by inflammation and itching. The eyelash mite is fascinating for a number of reasons. One of the most interesting things about them is their lack of an excretory system. They eat, but they don't excrete waste. Instead, they store it inside their bodies until they die. When they perish, they release their waste into the follicle, potentially causing an allergic reaction. Another peculiar characteristic? They're nocturnal creatures. When we're asleep, these mites get busy crawling out to mate and lay eggs right there in the follicles of our eyelashes. While it may seem disturbing, eyelash mites are more common than you think. So the next time you feel a tickle on your eyelashes, remember it might just be your tiny roommate saying hello. At number five, we have the hookworm. Now this little creature is quite a fascinating one, albeit in a spine-chilling way. The hookworm, as its name suggests, has a hook-like mouth part which it uses to latch onto the intestinal wall of its host. That's right, these creatures are not surface dwellers, they are quite comfortable in the warm and nutrient-rich environment of our intestines. Speaking of size, a typical hookworm is about one centimeter long. That's about the size of a small paperclip. Small but mighty, these creatures have a remarkable ability to drink up to one-tenth of a milliliter of blood per day. To put that into perspective, if a person has a few hundred of these, they could lose a significant amount of blood each day. Now you might be wondering, what effect does this have on the host? Apart from the obvious discomfort, the hookworm can cause anemia due to blood loss. In severe cases, it can lead to malnutrition and even cognitive impairment in children. And what makes the hookworm noteworthy? Its life cycle. The hookworm's eggs are excreted in the feces of infected persons. If these eggs find their way into the soil, they can hatch and infect others who come into contact with the contaminated soil. An unsettling reality, the hookworm is a silent invader. Coming in at number four, we have the tapeworm. This long, flat parasite almost seems like something out of a horror movie. But it's all too real. The tapeworm makes its home in the intestines of its host, often humans. And when we say home, we mean it. These creatures can grow up to a staggering 30 feet long. That's longer than a school bus. They're like the squatters of the insect world, setting up shop and refusing to leave. The tapeworm doesn't just lounge around all day though. No, it has a job to do. It feeds off the nutrients in your food. You eat and it eats. It's a parasitic relationship that can lead to weight loss and malnutrition for the host. But don't think the tapeworm is all take and no give. It's got a few tricks up its sleeve. For instance, it can reproduce inside you releasing eggs that can travel to other parts of your body. Isn't that a charming thought? While tapeworms don't usually cause severe harm, they can lead to complications if left untreated. So, it's best to give these unwelcome guests the boot as soon as you notice their presence. A silent dweller, the tapeworm is an unwelcome guest. At number three, we introduce the botfly. This is not your average insect. Botflies are known to cause a condition called myiasis, where their larvae infest the skin of warm-blooded animals, including humans. Yes, you heard that right. These insects are native to Central and South America, but have been found in other parts of the world as well. Botflies are relatively large, about the size of a bumblebee. They have spines on their bodies which serve to anchor them in place once they've found a host. Now this is where things get interesting. Female botflies do not lay their eggs directly on their host. Instead, they capture a mosquito mid-flight, lay their eggs on it, and then release it. When the mosquito lands on a warm-blooded host, the heat triggers the botfly eggs to hatch. The larvae then burrow into the skin, causing a painful, swollen lesion. 
Over the course of several weeks, they grow and feed on the host's tissue, causing discomfort and sometimes severe infection. But here's a noteworthy characteristic. Botfly larvae have been known to breathe through a tiny hole in the skin of their host. Once the larvae mature, they leave the host, drop to the ground, and pupate into adult botflies, ready to continue the cycle. As shocking as it may seem, the botfly is a reality for some. At the second spot, we have the Chigo flea. Also known by its less charming name, the sand flea, this parasite is a master at making our skin its home. Now don't be fooled by its petite size, measuring in at a mere one millimeter. This flea packs a punch that's anything but small. The Chigo flea is predominantly found in tropical and subtropical regions, where the warm sandy soil provides the perfect breeding ground. It's in these conditions that the female flea finds her way into our skin. She burrows in, often targeting our feet and makes herself comfortable. Once inside, she begins a transformation, swelling up to a size almost 50 times larger than her original form. And it's here, within the layers of our skin, that she lays her eggs. The result? A painful, itchy lesion that can lead to serious infections if not treated properly. But the Chigo flea isn't just a painful nuisance. In communities where this flea is prevalent, it's a significant public health concern, leading to a condition known as tungiasis. This chronic painful skin infestation can result in severe inflammation, ulceration, and in some cases, even amputation. In spite of its size, the Chigo flea is a hardy survivor, capable of living inside a human host for up to two weeks. This tiny creature is a testament to the saying that size isn't everything. The Chigo flea, a tiny creature with a big impact, and finally, at number one, we have the guinea worm. This parasitic creature, also known as Dracunculus metanensis, takes us on a journey that is as fascinating as it is unsettling. The guinea worm is not a creature of the shadows. It thrives in tropical and subtropical regions, particularly in parts of Africa, where it has a notorious reputation. The worm typically enters the human body through contaminated drinking water, a simple act that leads to a complex and unnerving life cycle. It's a small creature to begin with, barely visible to the naked eye, but don't let its minute size fool you. Once inside the human body, the worm undergoes an astonishing transformation. It grows, and it grows. A fully matured guinea worm can reach up to three feet in length, all within the human host. The effects of this unwelcome guest are far from subtle. Symptoms start as a blister, often on the lower leg. As the worm continues to grow, the blister becomes an open sore causing severe pain and sometimes even incapacitating the host. But what truly sets the guinea worm apart is its exit strategy. When it's ready to leave the host, the worm creates a burning sensation under the skin. This prompts the host to seek relief in water. And when they do, the worm seizes the moment, releasing its larvae into the water and starting the cycle anew. The guinea worm is a master of survival, relying on its host for growth and propagation. It's a testament to the adaptability and resilience of nature, demonstrating how even the smallest of creatures can have a significant impact. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Thanks to rigorous efforts by health organizations, the incidence of guinea worm disease is steadily declining. Yet the existence of such a creature serves as a stark reminder of the intricate and sometimes unsettling relationship between humans and the natural world. The guinea worm, our most shocking insect resident, reminding us of nature's uncanny ability to surprise.